deep in the beyonds, on the shores of the Nave America, northeast of the amorphous fields, lies a prison known as the Senta. Named after an exquisite phenomena of the Ninth World, the Senta itself is a giant eye that gazes down on the subjects of the jail, populating a seemingly endless series of halls and corridors, all coated in the same pale shade of green. There is no violence here. The Senta reaches into the minds of those who are stuck here for sentences ranging anywhere between 10 and 10,000 years and prevents them from acting any further beyond the most benign acts of aggression. The Senta doesn't act alone. It has listeners, or so they call themselves. Yet they do much more than merely listen, for they follow the will of the Senta, or so they claim. They sit in a darkened chamber of the prison, lit only by candles, waiting for bioluminescent fish to die and rise to the top of the dark waters lining the walls of this hall. They devour the flesh of these creatures, flesh which certainly contains a certain compound that alters their mental state, and they then cast the leftover bones on the cold synth floor, where they interpret the will of the Senta, finding a name, a location, and a period of time for a new prisoner to serve a sentence. The crime is never spoken or even known. When the Senta calls for someone to be brought to its prison, the listeners send letters out far and wide across the Ninth World, containing the name and location of this individual. Listeners, or even prisoners, may assume why they're being arrested. In some cases, there may indeed be a crime that was committed. And when none can be found, the listeners believe that the Senta peers into the past lives of all, finding heinous crimes once committed that must be atoned for in the present. The Senta has operated for at least 300 years. It existed in relative secrecy for this time. That was until the Order of Truth, the scientifically minded yet religiously oriented organization that holds significant political power in the steadfast, discovered this place. Keeping it a secret, even among the highest ranks of the order, Aeon priests have made frequent trips out to the Nave America to observe this prison, spending time speaking with the listeners, studying the Senta itself, and even creating reports and details on the prisoners held here. Curiously, the interests of the Senta and the Order of Truth have aligned. Not too far from the location of the prison itself exists a recently unearthed ruin, a location the Order believes contains an object of exquisite scientific study. Something, it would seem, the Senta is interested in allowing the Order to find and recover. Beyond that, little else is known. Now, three prisoners have been selected by the Senta to take this journey. The risk of danger, the Order believes, is too great for an Aeon priest to go, and so the Senta has offered up three individuals, promising their freedom once they recover whatever lies deep in the surface of the Earth that has caught the attention of the enigmatic Order of Truth and the ever-watchful gaze of the Senta. Speed, Heat, Pain, Darkness is an original adventure set in the Ninth World. In other games, it might be referred to as a dungeon crawl, but as a Numenera game, this is a ruin of secrets lost to deep time. On July 1st, I, along with the guys at Cypher Unlimited, will be playing through this adventure live on Twitch at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The stream will be made available on demand here on YouTube shortly after the stream. A detailed outline of the ruin will also be available on theinfiniteconstruct.com. This video exists to both promote the live stream as well as dive into some of the design decisions I made when taking this from a very abstract concept and building it out into something to actually be played. The ruin itself largely was constructed during a series of live stream sessions I did on Twitch. Since these sessions, I've added more detail and fleshed out a variety of narrative aspects, tying it into the growing concept I had of the Senta, its existence, history, and its relationship with other places and organizations in the Ninth World. As a result, many aspects of this ruin as it existed during the session have changed. Many have stayed the same. Whether you followed along or not, there will be some interesting surprises and developments for the party to unearth. You do not need to watch all of the live stream sessions to follow along during the game. Numenera's setting, the Ninth World, offers a variety of different focal points for the types of adventures you might want to run. Dividing the setting up into at least three distinct broader locations, the Steadfast, Beyond, and Beyond the Beyond, offers players different options when it comes to shaping the tone of the adventure. 
For this quest, I felt setting it in the beyond was more appropriate as it requires a lesser amount of lore knowledge and can exist independently of the slightly more dense political history that exists in the Steadfast. The beyond, and to a greater extent the areas designated beyond the beyond, provide more direct access to Numenera's basic premise, that of the Earth a billion years in the future after the rise and fall of colossal civilizations, and the genre of science fantasy overall. The beyond is sort of a nice compromise of allowing the vibrant lore Monty Cook Games has produced to provide a foundation without needing to get too much into the history of the setting while letting the genre and setting become a springboard for new and original ideas and stories. This is why I gravitated toward placing the ruin at the heart of the adventure in the beyond. From the drafting sessions, a few key things were established, but one was that this ruin was likely once a massive complex used by one of the prior worlds and it has undergone substantial change due to time and geological activity. In fact, recent geological activity has been, it would seem, what has made the ruin accessible in the first place. The Earth is a strange and unpredictable place a billion years in the future. Eons of technological accomplishment we can barely even dream of has seeded the Earth with a permanent legacy of the weird. And so stating that recent earthquakes or strange weather phenomena has made a ruin accessible is as simple as saying it has happened. No extra lore connections need to be made. Monty Cook Games has, however, provided Numenera with a lush fabric of narrative potential, and this is why I drifted to the amorphous fields in the beyond as a likely place to start looking for where this adventure would be set. Described as a place of constant geological churning, twisting, and undulation, the fields themselves are a little too dangerous and specific to be the site of this ruin and adventure, but any space that has an expanse of semi-solid churning earth and pockets of organic soup likely influences the area around it. Here, the setting just made sense. Due to the ever-changing nature of the amorphous fields, a nearby region of Earth has been cleared out, allowing access to a ruin previously hidden. While Speed, Heat, Pain, Darkness is built to be a one-shot adventure, taking this approach of finding a place in the setting allows for greater opportunity should an adventure expand beyond its initial premise. I often like to think of the Ninth World setting as a narrative scaffold, allowing support and movement through character and world events. The amorphous fields provides the backdrop for this adventure, the players and I know it exists, it shapes and defines the weirdness of the world, and also makes other bizarre manifestations of the Numenera combine to deliver the tone and feel of this very strange and weird environment. One of the most elastic and usable aspects of how the Ninth World utilizes the genre of science fantasy is in the capacity to directly work with metaphor and conceptual narrative aspects in a way that doesn't demand strict rules for technology or magic. The setting, despite a handful of constraints as guides, is relatively hands-off in dictating how you frame the tone and specific details of an adventure, particularly when it comes to original concepts. One of my personal approaches to running one-shot adventures is to allow players complete freedom and agency over how they are inserted into the narrative. That said, it helps to have a place to start and a frame of narrative reference to explain why it's these characters in this place and at this time. And that's where the freedom of narrative control and tone, the ability to work with thematic concepts with a high degree of flexibility, really shines in Numenera. Speed, Heat, Pain, Darkness involves a standard adventure premise. The party must go out into the world and recover an object. This is the spine of the adventure, and it was what I built everything off of moving forward. I wanted a direct and easily communicated purpose for acquiring the artifact in the ruin. Securing one's own personal freedom is a very direct purpose, as it doesn't require much beyond a character's assumed value that they place on their own life. I decided that the party will be assumed to be prisoners of a mysterious jail and that this ruin is the key to their freedom. Concepts of imprisonment and law enforcement bring about a whole set of related concepts and signifiers, and so I have allowed the party complete freedom to decide why they are in this prison. If they want to roleplay as an actual convict, potentially guilty of certain crimes, they can. If they want to roleplay as a person who's been wrongfully accused, they can. Anything in between and beyond is possible here. All the quest premise does is explain why it's these characters at this time and in this place. 
The nature of the prison had to reflect this freedom. As the prison itself is highly unlikely to be a space the game is played in, it serves as background material. I went with the concept of the panopticon. The beauty of the Ninth World as a setting means that I can stick very close to this conceptual nature of a panopticon, literally describing it as a prison that is forever under the gaze of a giant eye that looks down on the open corridors and cubicles that make up the jail. This is what became the Senta. The eeriness and levels of control the Senta has over its subjects is sure to give any character the proper motivation to leave. But what of how they got here? Again, I wanted to make this open, so I decided that the Senta ought to have worshippers, listeners as I referred to them, who believe that they understand some kind of otherworldly desire of the Senta. The Ninth World encourages exponential levels of twists and turns, always multiplying the weird. The listeners then determine who should be imprisoned by practicing a kind of divination. In the prison there exist pools of bioluminescent fish, the flesh of which when consumed sends one into a kind of daze, leaving the door open for this to be interpreted as a kind of magic or a kind of psychotropic effect. Again, a pillar of the ninth world is interpretation, both of the GM and of the players. After consuming the fish, they use the bones to determine the will of the Senta. This gives them a name and a location. How they're able to find such people throughout the Ninth World with such precision is undoubtedly a mystery, but by not thoroughly detailing the rules of the Numenera or how the Senta works, this premise allows for mystery to grow where it otherwise might not. It's through this process that new prisoners are found. Listeners spread throughout the Ninth World communicate secret messages indicating who they are to go out and arrest. Some believe they know what the crime committed was while other, more vague scenarios are assumed to be a part of the Senta's mysterious knowledge. All of this background, lore if you will, is meant to frame the party and provide opportunity for them to insert themselves into the narrative as they wish. The prison, the path to freedom, the conditions of their arrest are completely up to the players, allowing for freedom and agency, but also guaranteeing that no two versions of this quest will play out or even start identically. The rest of the background information, the interests of the Order of Truth, the specific placement of this prison and ruin in the Ninth World simply allow for things to get moving. The party happens to be characters who are in a specific time and place as things occur in the Ninth World, and what the players do with the situation situation is what shapes the story to be told. Beyond the point of entering the ruin resides the unknown, both in-game and out-of-game. I as the GM know a few more things that await the players, but I have no way of knowing what they'll do with them. The centerpiece of the quest, Speed, Heat, Pain, Darkness's Ruin, was created using Numenera Discovery and Destiny, Jade Colossus, Ruins of the Prior Worlds, Injecting the Weird, the Ninth World Bestiary, and the Weird and GM Intrusion decks. Like the listeners in their interpretations of the fish bones, I, as the writer of this adventure, use the material in these books, along with some of my own narrative and design impulses, to allow this space to unfold in a certain way. I won't get into the fine details of the ruin here in this video. The design sessions available on my channel as they were live streamed detail some of the main layout of the ruin, as well as a few specific surprises and story elements that await. While knowing this information does spoil a slight portion of the adventure, I have since added a lot more material here and some reinterpretations of the results I drew from the books and card decks to shape this into something a bit more substantial and mysterious. This is not merely the ruin as it was seen during these streams. In a future video after the live stream of the adventure on July 1st at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch, I will post a follow-up video that discusses the ruin as it was presented during the game. For now, I can say that whether you've watched the design sessions of the ruin or not, you will still find a number of exciting surprises. You may have a sense of what's around each corner if you watch the streams or the videos on demand, but many things will look different or reveal something completely brand new. The design sessions in many ways were a rough draft of how this ruin has evolved, as I prepared it for this game and am excited to see a new take on the spaces it offers for interactive narrative play. 
Speed, Heat, Pain, Darkness will be streamed on Twitch on July 1st at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Featuring the guys at Cypher Unlimited as our cast, I am incredibly excited to run this game for folks to check out, both during the stream on Twitch and on the video on demand, which will be published to YouTube shortly after the stream. As the first live actual play production from the Infinite Construct, this is only the beginning. The channel will continue to be a source for all things Numenera, and there will be more actual play productions, both stream and pre-recorded in the future. For now, please subscribe to the channel right here on YouTube, as well as Twitch at twitch.tv slash The Infinite Construct. Also, follow the channel on Twitter at INF Construct for regular updates and general social media musings from myself. I'm looking forward to seeing the guys at the CU during the stream, as well as everyone joining to watch the game on Twitch. Thank you for watching this video and for supporting the channel. The weird has only begun.